some people popping in right now. So we're, we are being recorded and I will make sure that that is posted at the conclusion of our meeting on the Silver Falls School District YouTube page. So welcome everybody. Got uh, just a, a few updates, a couple of little changes. Um, want to make sure everybody is aware of and then as we get a little bit closer, I always want to make sure that you guys have uh, my attention in terms of questions and um, anything that uh, might be on your minds as we start the school year off. So uh, um, we have uh, Nicole Morris is joining me this evening. Nicole's our new office manager. I think I've introduced her previously. So good evening, Nicole. How are you tonight? Good evening. Doing well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, uh, a couple changes to start right off. Uh, dates is always a hot topic. So this, we, we have some, we had some changes in staffing for a kid that impacted kindergarten and first grade. One of the biggest reasons is that our kindergarten registration numbers are a little bit lower. And so we are in the process of moving one of our kindergarten teachers to support the first grade numbers. We have some really high first grade numbers and a couple of classrooms were in the 31, 32 students per class. Um, and that was due to some families choosing to go online for the entire year for their children. And so we have one of our teachers, Najma Chima, is, uh, is teaching both first and second grade online the entire year. And that's actually a district class. So she has a, uh, for online only, classrooms can be a little bit larger. So she actually has 37 students and 26 of those students are first graders and second graders. And so that made some changes. Obviously in first grade, we only had four first grade teachers. And so classroom sizes got a little bit large. So we've moved one uh, kindergarten teacher. We're kind of making some final adjustments with, their, with, with her position. And um, we will, as part of the class placements and uh, letting everybody know where, where students are uh, this Friday. We will post kindergarten and first grade classes so you'll be able to see what uh, what that change actually looks like. So got some details still to work out there. But So class placements again coming up this Friday, September 4th. We will place those on the window so we, will, we have a couple of updates for the second grade so we'll make those updates and then we'll post kindergarten and first grade. Um, next week, we have a couple of changes as well. Changes are, <clears throat> we had originally intended to distribute iPads and collect registration paperwork. Um, we actually have some annual Silver Falls School District forms that every family receives. Typically that happens through the classroom teachers and we just collect those at the beginning of school year um, with some beginning of the year packets. Well, since everything is online, that process is a little bit different this year. So I'm going to post tomorrow, both on our school district website, as well as to send out through Parent Square, some annual forms that uh, are required of every family to fill out and bring back to us. Um, we will also follow up and send those in the mail for our first graders and second graders. <clears throat> our kindergartners have all filled out and our new students have all filled out um, uh, registration packets and in that registration packet is our annual form. So kindergartners will not be receiving these forms in the mail. So first and second graders, annual Silver Falls School District forms will be sent out. And then our schedule, which again, I will post this and I'll make sure that you have this in um, email and, and text when the messages go out. But we're gonna start off with uh, iPad, meet your teacher and annual Silver Falls School District forms. Um, for kindergarten on Tuesday the 8th, Tuesday the 8th. That time is going to be 4 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. is the window. If that doesn't work for you, please let us know and we can arrange an alternate time for you to come to the school. And again, that's meet your teacher, iPad or technology pickup, and then the annual Silver Falls School District forms that are required. So kindergarten, Tuesday, September 8th, 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Wednesday, September 9th is going to be first grade, same time, four o'clock to seven o'clock. And then Thursday, September 10th is gonna be second grade. Again, same time, four o'clock to seven o'clock. We will put together a map 
kind of, of a flow that we're, cause this is going to be drive through, but basically you're going to enter off of church street. You're going to come into the, uh, the uh, mobile drop-off area that is located just off of church street, the church street side of our school, um, which is the uh, east side of the school. And you're going to pull into the parking lot there. We'll have stations set up. We'll take your paperwork that you have for us. We'll hand you your child's iPad and, uh, and the teachers will be there. So you'll get an opportunity to meet the teachers face to face. Any, uh, let's see, I did have one question in the chat, but I didn't get to yet. So where is sec, where are second grade classes posted? So both at, at the main office, both entry doors, the entry door where the students come in from the bus drop off on a typical year, as well as the main entrance at the front of the building, they're posted on just on the inside of the window there. So you can just read your child's name, read your teacher and see what cohort A or B they are enrolled in. And again, uh, when your child is placed in a cohort, remember the cohorts, whether they're A or B, um, we just took the, the A through L roughly the first half of the alphabet of their last name and place them in cohort A, which will be Tuesdays and Thursdays, if and when we get to a hybrid schedule. And then if you are in cohort B, if and when we get to hybrid schedule, you'll be on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that basically is when we get to the point where we're half capacity. So uh, that's what that means. If there's an issue or if there are challenges, could be a work schedule, could be something um, where, where that may not work for you, we can, we can make adjustments. There's not a problem there. Um, please let us know how we can help you. And, uh, and again, we are online all the way through November 13th. So again, that determination in terms of if we can come back to hybrid learning or in-person learning where we would go half capacity, that date we're gonna make that decision is gonna be October 5th. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Other, let's see. Teachers are back, teachers started back, and so they are working hard to get uh, kind of the new school year up to speed. They're working in their Canvas platform, which is the dashboard where you are gonna see all of your child's assignments and progress. And then Edgenuity is the name of the curriculum, and so that's where the assignments and the lessons and the modules are actually gonna come from. So very interactive, a lot of videos and, um, should be very easy for the students to follow. If there are challenges, please make sure you communicate with us. Your whoever's designated as the learning coach uh, can communicate with the teacher, and uh, we just you know want to make sure that your child's making the progress that uh, he or she is expected to this school year. Um, let's see, a couple things that I've mentioned before. Uh, everything that we have recorded are virtual town halls. Um, a lot of information from the district is posted on the Silver Falls School District YouTube channel. Um, and that is just, uh, if you go to YouTube, it's just SFSD and then the word official. And that, uh, that channel will actually come up and you can go view anything there. We actually have a link to our Mark Twain on our Mark Twain webpage for that YouTube channel. Um, Yes, the other thing too, and, and I'm sure there are some questions out there, so I want to make sure that there's an opportunity for parents to ask questions, but the other thing too will be, as we get a little bit closer to the beginning of the school year, our orientation is going to look a little bit different, but a big part of our orientation is want to make sure that you have connectivity, that you're, that you're able to get your child's device connected to the Canvas platform um, and be able to access the, the, uh, the modules and the lessons and whatever is being assigned by the teacher, that you have some parent resources, some point, a point person here at the school that you can contact if you're having difficulty. And, um, and then also if, uh, you know, if you need to communicate, making sure that you know how to use the communication tools, whether they come through Parent Square, which has a chat uh, ability or a, an email ability, you can obviously email us directly, as well as in the Canvas, uh, the Canvas dashboard, there's the ability to uh, communicate with the teacher. Um, got a question coming in here. Are there apps for Canvas that we download on our phone? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if there's apps that you download on your phone. The, the students are going to have a Canvas page that they go to and that's where their assignments are and that'll be part of like the Silver Falls School District account for every student. 
So I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, I'm going to have to write that down. You got me, Rachel. I'm not sure if there are canvas apps uh, to download on the, on the, on the phones, but I, I can ask most everything is going to be through the child's iPad as well as online. There should be a way that you can monitor like on another device. Yeah, there's a parent. So the question was, is there a parent log on for canvas? Yes, there is. Um, it's a, it's basically an observer um, account or a parent account where you can monitor the progress. If you have questions, you can chat with the teacher. Um, but yes, that'll be part of our orientation to make sure that everybody has the information that they need. And so in years past, when we would start up the school year, we would have in-person orientation and you'd come through, you'd meet the teacher, you get to take a look at the classroom, you'd you know, sign up for you know, being a parent volunteer or classroom volunteer. So basically all of that information is gonna happen virtually. The teachers are gonna deliver an orientation, but it's gonna be virtual. So once we get the students in the classroom, they'll send out an invite and parents will do basically kind of a, you know, like we're doing a town hall right now, but she'll do that with the individual teacher. So you can ask questions, make sure that you're connected uh, in terms of your child's Canvas account. And uh, if you have any questions or have any resource needs at all, the teacher will be able to help you. Um, yeah, Amy, there was another question. Oh, there are Canvas apps. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Amy. Um, yeah, I think when we get a little bit closer and our teachers get a better understanding of how to use Canvas, uh, there, there will be some direction for parents in terms of what apps you can download, what you can do, but I appreciate that input. Thank you very much, Amy. And then will the assignments in Canvas be linked to Google Classroom or Seesaw, or are they done within the Canvas platform? And so the answer to that is that the Canvas platform basically kind of replaces Seesaw, it's a communication tool, but it's also kind of that, it's also kind of the dashboard, I guess, is a good way to describe it, where assignments will be posted, your child's progress will be posted there. Um, it's, it's a way to very quickly for the parent um, or whoever the instructional learning coach is to go in and take a look at the progress and um, if there's any questions or any feedback that needs to happen for assignments. So, so like another example would be <clears throat> if you opened up your child's dashboard or your child is, is looking at their dashboard in Canvas, there will be large buttons that'll be color coded and the teachers will train the kiddos like, hey, we have a Google Meet. Well, I open up my iPad, I go to my Canvas page, I click on my video meeting button and I click it, boom, and it takes me right to the video meeting that I'm supposed to be signed up for. Um, if there are lessons, I can go click whatever the button, if the button says learning, I go click on learning and it goes right to the assignments that I need to um, that I need to complete for that day. And then if I have questions um, or I need to go watch a, another video, there's a button there where I can click and you can and it takes you directly to it. It's supposed to be an easy way for the child to navigate all of maybe the maybe a little more complicated kind of behind the scenes aspects of their of their curriculum and their learning. <clears throat> Any thoughts on a schedule yet? What time the students need to log in, et cetera? What times have they been have the they have the meetings? And so we actually talked just a little bit about this today with the staff. And really, the way we're going to open up the school year is that we're going to start with a very structured schedule. We're going to the entire classroom is going to meet. Probably talk a little bit about classroom norms. Talk about etiquette talk about how to navigate this new system, this new world that we're trying to learn from. And, uh, and so we'll have some set times where we meet, like have a morning meeting or a class meeting. And then from there, we go right into um, English language arts at a, at a set time. So let's say we have class meeting at 8.30, and then we have English language arts at nine o'clock uh, for kindergartners and maybe like 9.30 for uh, first graders. And, um, and so those, those times might be a little bit staggered just in case we have students who are at different grade levels, but maybe within the same household. And so we wanna stagger those just a little bit, but your child's gonna go in uh, at certain times, have a synchronized or a live time with the teacher. And then after that, there will be asynchronous time to learn. And so after that, they'll be given a little bit of direction. The teacher may say, students, I want you to complete assignments X, Y, and Z. 
and gives them a little bit of direction to do that, maybe prompts what they're gonna see, like in the video that may teach them the skill or show them the skill, might be a nice cartoon animated video or something along those lines. And the students go in and complete some of those uh, uh, asynchronized activities. And then a little bit, and then they're gonna have a break a little bit later on. You might have another synchronized activity that, that focuses on math for the day and kind of same type of process. And then they'll end up having some time where they go back and it's an asynchronized or practice time where they log onto their lessons and complete it. So we're, we're working on exactly what that's gonna look like. We will have that soon. But what I want parents to understand is that it's gonna be very basic, very stock at the beginning. We're gonna run that for about three to four weeks. And really the key for us is gonna be to see how the students respond to the curriculum. So it's gonna be kind of like a foot race. You know, we're gonna we're gonna hit the go button and students are gonna have the ability to take off. And some students are gonna be faster than other students and be way ahead um, in terms of completing their assignments, uh, maybe completing them with, with a, a high performance level. And then some students are gonna have some challenges in there, maybe not quite understand, maybe have some connectivity issues, maybe some things that we did not consider. And, um, and so once we start seeing some of that and we start seeing some, maybe some things that we need to respond to, then we might make some adjustments to that schedule. So after the first, you know, three to four weeks, somewhere around that time, instead of having one classroom meet where we meet with all 25 kids, let's say in a classroom, the teacher might break that up into maybe two groups or three groups or four groups. And group one may meet at 8.30 and group two may meet at 8.45 and group three may meet at nine o'clock and start to break it down and individualize the time with the teacher a little bit more so very similar to when the teacher runs rotations or um or learning activities in the classroom kind of kind of centers they rotate from one center to the next center um so that's kind of an idea of what the schedule looks like today when i talked to the staff i talked a lot about we're going to start off very structured in the beginning. And by the time we get to the end, the curriculum is flexible enough and individual enough that each student, it may be a very individualized education plan for them as they kind of get going. We're trying to meet each kid where they are and give them the supports and the needs that they need. Some students maybe that go really fast or um, need to be more challenged. We're, we're gonna have to probably supplement a little bit, differentiate for them, try to reach them on a little bit deeper level, um, a little bit deeper depth of knowledge level. And, um, and that's really gonna be the trick this year. So they're not, they're not all gonna move at the same pace. They're not all gonna respond to the curriculum in the same way. Um, let's see, how about, uh, why don't I kind of hit the pause button right there? Are there any kind of thoughts out there or questions or maybe something unique to, um, something that's just kind of on your mind for your child? Does anybody feel like unmuting and kind of sharing a little bit or letting me know what's on your mind? Hey, this is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. I just had a question about like, kids are gonna be at home. They're gonna say, you know, mom and dad, I need help with whatever. What is, like we want our kids to be successful and we want to intervene and help them, but who to say, sorry, I can't help you. You gotta ask your teacher. Like we don't wanna do it for them. They need to learn themselves, but what are, is, do you have any guidance on where's the line on helping? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think that I think that is going to be one thing that the teachers are going to talk a little bit about, like as we navigate the how to, how do we do this? Because, you know, parents are going to have other things going on. You might be in a situation where you're working from home and you and you might not be able to be interrupted. But we all know, you know, the, the, the students and, and your children, uh, their learning is important. So you're going to want to break away and help them. But I, I would so I'm thinking of two things all at the same time. The first one is it's really, really important to kind of as the year progresses and you have a clear distinction of what they can do and maybe what they still need help with. And so our term for that in school is just called release of responsibility. So as they, you know, they may ask you because it's easy, hey, mom, can you show me how to do this? 
but you know full well that they know they can go back and rewatch the video, for example, or there there may be uh, there may be a real convenient way that they can communicate with the teacher. Maybe I haven't we haven't ran the Canvas yet. We haven't ran the Edgenuity program yet, but maybe there's a help button where they can click a button and it goes to the teacher and they you know can kind of see like, hey, Audrey has a question. I need to make sure I get in touch with her learning coach. The learning coach is going to kind of be the point person, which obviously in most homes, it's going to be the parent. Um, but I think the first thing that I'm thinking of is there's going to be a line there in terms of release of responsibility and what your child is capable of and what they can take responsibility for and then where you have to step in as a parent. The other side of that is the system is uh, th there. there are convenient ways for you to ask questions of your teacher and get a relatively quick response. There could be a chat, especially if it's during the school day, you ask a teacher a question, you should be able to get a response within a reasonable amount of time. If it's something the kiddo's having a real difficult time with, maybe the teacher might, you know, might catch you and say, hey, I'm available. Can I pop on live? Can we hit the live button? And I can, I can walk her through that. Um, it may be something that multiple kids are having difficulties with and the teacher puts together a little five minute video to reintroduce the concept and and maybe touch on a couple of points in the video that came with that lesson uh, to help you know to help students navigate that and ultimately to help the children um, you know take on a little bit re more responsibility maybe be a little bit more responsible for their learning so does that help your question Rachel yes that's great and then any my other uh, my other question was since everything's online, how are kids going to be doing like handwriting and reading and things like that, that they would normally do live on like pencil yeah. and paper versus now typing on an iPad? Yeah, I think in some of those cases, like one thing that we want to make sure, and I know kinder, I, I'm just thinking of kinder as I'm talking right now, kinder teachers do an outstanding job of this because it's something that they prioritize at the beginning of the school year. A lot of times when they come into class before class is started, they might have some activities and one of the activities are some fine motor skills. You know, they might have some tweezers and they might have some beads and they're really trying to strengthen some of those fine motor skills, uh, fine, you know, fine motor skill muscles because that supports uh, student handwriting. And so some of the activities may simply be, you know, Get a, get a piece of paper and here's the activity I need you to write or we're going to practice writing and they might copy them off of the um, off of the screen. It might show them a letter and they're going to copy the letter down or transpose the letter. And then <clears throat> there's I'm sure there's going to be options where they can take a picture or they can take a video. And so they might simply they might simply do some writing, hold their paper up and take a picture of it and send that evidence back to the teacher. So, so there, uh, that will be uh, on the minds of the teachers. That will be part of, probably part of the curriculum and some of the activities they ask the students to do. And, um, and so there will be ways to demonstrate that they can write um, and they can use some of those fine motor skills. So other, other questions, kind of check in the chat room here as well. Touched on schedules. A couple, have a new person jumped in there. Um, while, I, while I have everybody, if, um, if you know of maybe a family that has a kindergarten age student and maybe they haven't enrolled them or maybe they're kind of on the fence because of, you know, because of our situation in the pandemic right now, I'd really encourage you to at, at least reach out to us and make sure that we know who that is. Our kinder numbers are uh, really, really low. Um, we have some students that are doing online the entire school year. But uh, in a typical year, we sit around 115, 120 kindergartners, and we probably, we probably are total uh, about 70. So we're, so we're missing about probably 40 to 50 kindergartners that typically register. Um, seems like too big of a number that, uh, that we would be missing. So we've been trying to advertise. You've probably seen some posts and some things on social media about reminding families to register their kindergartners, but we are uh, trying to make a big push for that, trying to make sure we have them. And some families might just be, you know, hanging on and we're going to do kindergarten next year. So how about, how about other thoughts? Any, any other parents out there? 
Heidi Emmett's got to have some good questions. What's uh, what's on Emmett's mind for tonight? Uh oh, I lost her. She she tried. Anybody else? Other other thoughts? I don't have a new. There we go. He's trying to get back on. Hey, hi, Emmett. You gotta unmute. There you go. Hi. Hi, Emmett. Do you have a question for me? What What do you want to know about school this year? Mm, I want to know. Mm. Or what does your goat coconut want to know about school this year? I'll learn about turtles. Uh, go ahead. You want to learn about turtles, Emmett? Yeah. We'll have to teach you about turtles. I'll have to keep that in mind. Maybe we'll talk to the teachers about having some turtle themed activities this year. How does that sound? How's how's Blackberry doing? How's Blackberry doing? Good. <laughs> Next time we get on a video chat, you'll have to show me blackberry and coconut. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks for chatting. I'll see you later, okay? Okay, bye. <laughs> um, I think as we get closer to starting and we finalize kind of what orientation and things that like that look like the one thing the one transition that I feel like will help a lot of families and help the students is when you guys you guys are in front of the teacher you know who your teacher is the teacher talks about kind of the routine and the process you get an opportunity to see canvas to see where the assignments are going to be um to get a better understanding of you know if your child gets stuck or if you get stuck or you have questions What's the communication pathway look like? So, you know, that's uh, that's probably our next step. Um, like I said, I'm available for questions. If you guys uh, if you guys want to email or if you something comes up during the day and you just want to call in, um, we are we are ready to serve. So, a couple things that are going to be coming up here shortly is um, I'm going to get a notice out tomorrow, and this is um, this is for uh, first and second graders. Um, we are going to make sure on the website there's a link as well as I will attach to the email that I send out through Parent Square. We've got some annual Silver Falls School District forms that need to be completed. So if you could take a look at those and complete those, that would be great. If you are not able to print them or for some reason you've got some technical difficulties and are not able to get a hard copy, we are going to put a hard copy in the mail to you. Um, and then when you come on your day, whether it's next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, when you come on your day, if, if for some reason you forgot them, we'll have some places where you can turn off and we'll hand you a clipboard and, um, and you can finish filling those out. I think there's only three. Nicole, can you, can you chime in? Or, or, do you know how many of those annual forms that we will have for families? Yes, there's about four. Okay. And they're yeah, so one page. They're one page forms, though. They're not extensive. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah. four, four of our uh, required paperwork forms, and um, we will uh, we'll post those so you can hit, have them earlier. We'll send them in the mail, and uh, we will also have blank copies that you can complete those, pull out of the line, and complete those. So that uh, so be looking for that. Um, and then again, on your day, you'll have a uh, your you're, we'd love for you to bring your child. We'll have a meet the teacher uh, place. The teacher will kind of come by the window and you'll be able to see them. And um, 
and we will get you make sure that you have your technology have your ipad for that for that day too so and then the last date and i gave out before was for uh um pictures school pictures school pictures are going to be on september 23rd and we're going going to uh put together a schedule where by grade level you come at a certain time and um you'll have a station where you stop you'll get out you'll take your picture your child can get back in the vehicle and then you can drive away uh, if that time doesn't work for you you just need to communicate with your teacher and um, you can come at an alternate time um, or we can set up we can set up something else for you and your teacher will be able to share some of those options so let's see you've got a question came oh Audrey wants to know about the library um all right audrey are you are you ready to hear about library <clears throat> so we actually have a new librarian this year her name is tia purdy and she worked at another school in the district in the library and so she is our new librarian this year we haven't talked about books um yet but we are going to talk a little bit about that we may try to come up with a digital way to have some options for students to um, maybe we can upload digital books to their Canvas account. We actually have not talked about a checkout process to get a hard hard book in their hands. So um, I will keep that on my to-do list, Audrey, I promise. And uh, if I don't get you an answer before you get a chance to meet your teacher, then make sure you have that question ready for her, okay? And then another question that came in from a parent was, I, um, oh, is that, is that Audrey? Is, is Audrey right there, Rachel? Yeah, she's here. Hi, Audrey. Hi. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Are you excited to read some books? Yeah. What, what are you going to read about? What do you like to read about? The ocean. The ocean. Why did you choose the ocean? Because it has lots of sea creatures in it. Oh, can you name two sea creatures that are in the ocean? Puffer fish and and a Wow, that's great. I love it. All right. Well, we'll try to make sure we've got some library options for you so you can read about the ocean, okay? Thank you for sharing. Uh, do we have an idea of what schedule will look like, uh, amount of FaceTime? Okay, so <clears throat> the question is kind of about, about the amount of FaceTime. I did touch on this just a little bit last time, but basically we're going to start the school year, and I talked to the teachers about two synchronous or live times where they meet with every child. And uh, we do have to take attendance, and there's multiple ways that the teachers will go into talking about that, but synchronized live um, opportunity with the kids is one way that we take attendance as well. But um, basically, we're going to try to have a live synchronous opportunity to start off with, with each kid in each of our subject focuses. So obviously, at elementary, our focus is English language arts and math, as well as science, social studies, and PE. And there are other specials in there as well. But um, so your teachers will start off with two synchronous times with every child at the beginning of the school year. And then how that changes, as I referenced before, is as we see how each child responds to the curriculum, we may increase that time. So if we have a child that's having difficulty or is not making the progress that he or she, uh, we'd, we'd like to see from that student, then we're gonna add probably another synchronized time or another adult to help and support whatever that need is. So. It could be English as a second language. It could be some special services. It could be an intervention in math or an intervention in reading. And so we really don't know what those are, but we have a team that takes a look at those and tries to make sure that we provide an intervention, which could ultimately change the schedule. So it could add additional time that your child would be um, asked to meet live, for example, or additional assignments or additional practice time, depending on what they're what their need is, I guess. So does that, uh, does that answer your question, Christy? 
Perfect. Perfect. Um, another question is, uh, if a student is sick, how do you let us know? And I think we're just very simply put, you can go through your Canvas account and you can let the teacher know that your child is sick and they'll forward that on to the office. If it's easier for you to call in the office, then you can go ahead and use our regular system of calling in. If you want to email, you can do that as well. So I think in terms of like if your child's sick or if they're not able to participate, um, I think you just reach out whatever channel is most convenient for you and just let us know. So meet, yes, meet the teacher dates. Are you ready, Audrey? Here they come. So for kindergarten, Tuesday, September 8th, so next Tuesday. For first grade, it's going to be Wednesday, September 9th. And then for second grade, it's going to be Thursday, September 10th. And there's three activities there. You've got your meet the teacher. You'll receive your iPad. And then you'll be asked to turn in those annual Silver Falls School District forms. That is the plan. Any, any other questions or are there any topics I, I didn't cover? You are very welcome. Nicole, is there anything from the office that you'd like to share with parents? Um, I don't think so. Like I said, the big thing is getting the forms in, which we'll get that out to parents. Um, and then just we're in the office. So if there's anything that needs to be dropped off or any copies or anything that needs to go with reg your registrations, um, we're there and we can get those from you. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, you've covered the rest of it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, the, the only other thing, that, and I think teachers will go back over this, but last, uh, last week in the virtual town hall, I talked a little bit about school supplies and uh, a learning space, a dedicated learning space for students. So we actually put a post on the, on the Mark Twain webpage, but uh, there's just a list of basic supplies, and uh, we're just going to start there. It's going to be a unique year. Obviously, a lot of this is online, but we know very well that students learn best when they're hands-on and they get a chance to practice things. We had questions earlier in the town hall about writing and, and uh, you know, some of those typical activities that a student would participate in. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of arts and crafts opportunities still during the school year. And so uh, take a look on our web page at that list of school supplies and then be thinking about a dedicated space where you can set up a, a school desk or have a small table. Um, school supplies might be in a shoebox or a drawer, just a dedicated space kind of free from distractions and interruptions where your child has the best chance possible at being successful this year. So um, one question kind of popped in during the eighth through the 11th, will students be meeting virtually at all with teachers for a smooth start? So we are probably not scheduling anything. And the first time we will schedule something is, is uh, the teacher will reach out via phone call um, or email and contact all families. Like, we, like for example, um, when we set up and we communicate, I'm thinking more on the kindergarten side of things, but we used to call all the families and set up individual appointments. We may make contact or we may provide information for each classroom to have their own virtual meeting. So we probably won't have anything during the week of the 8th through the 11th. The first time we'll probably, you'll probably meet with your, um, with your teacher on the 14th. But uh, we, we, have, we will get that out to you. We haven't fine-tuned that yet and we haven't set that schedule. But the orientation will be virtual and that will be the first time that you meet with your teacher. Okay. You are welcome. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I think that's that's about it that I have on my list. We really don't have too much additional new new information, or um, so I am happy to stay on. If you want to wait until some folks log off, uh, feel free to do so. Um, but uh, I thank you for your time this evening, and um, please let, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do to help you. Okay, so I'll go ahead and sign off and let folks go. And if you would like to stay and visit with me, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you. It's time.